All right, so uh, we're going through our um, Lent series on uh, spiritual disciplines, the means of grace, the means of experiencing God more. Um, uh, so today we're going to talk about God's Word. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there's so many aspects of God's Word, like the preach Word and, and, and studying the Word and uh, all these things. But today is really going to be a, about uh, our personal devotion to the Word, our personal time in God's Word. So let's turn to uh, 2 Timothy 3, uh, chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's after 1 Timothy, uh, which is after, you know, some other Pauline epistles. Um, but it will be on the screen if you need help. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16. Oh, sorry, 3, verse 1 through 17. Here you go. Uh, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied his power. Avoid such men as these. For among them are those who enter into households and captivate weak women weighed down with sins led on by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth, men of depraved mind, rejected in regard to the faith. But they will not make further progress, for their folly will be obvious to all, just as Janus's and Jambres' follow, folly was also. Now you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, but evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me pray real quick. Uh, Father, thank you so much for your precious word. I pray that through this time you would uh, give us a greater hunger and desire to know you through your word uh, and to experience the, the growth and transformation and and the completeness and the wholeness that we can find through your word, our identity, our purpose, all the things that um, uh, your word does and has the authority to do. I pray that you would uh, increase just our appetite uh, to, to know you more uh, through this time, Lord. Would you speak uh, to us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so uh, about 15 years ago, there was like, there was a cheesy romantic comedy uh, called uh, 50 First Dates. And um, it's a guy named Henry who's like a veterinarian and who, uh, you know, he, he lives in Hawaii, but he preys on all the women who vacation in Hawaii and he's not interested in, uh, in, in serious relationships until one day he meets a girl named Lucy and is super attracted to her. And they hit it off um, and she asks her, asks him, let's meet again next day. And so when he does, guess what happens? She's like, who are you? Right? She doesn't remember him. Um, and so he has to find out what, how come she doesn't know me? We had such a good time. We hit it off well. And someone, someone explains to him that years ago she got in this car accident and got this certain type of amnesia that inhibits her from forming new memories. So she can't remember the short term things that have happened in her life. Um, and so, but because he's fallen for her, he's determined to pursue her every day, even if it has to be the first date every time. And he's uh, pursuing her. Um, and then, uh, uh, so each day, he, he, they rekindle uh, that connection. Some days don't work, but most of the days, you know, they hit it off again. And, and he's like, but this isn't going anywhere. Uh, and then one day, because she has to meet him again and again, but one day she realizes that, oh my gosh, years have passed and, you know, who, and she's just utterly confused because, um, 
she realizes that uh, years have passed, but she's living like it was the last day before her accident, before she got amnesia. And she couldn't remember anything within those past years. And she's just living day to day like it's the last day of right before the accident. Uh, and she's de devastated and just confused, like, where the heck am I? And, you know, like, uh, who are, you know, who are these, uh, what, what have I done these past few years? Because she has no recollection of that. And so this guy named Henry, he makes a video for her and he tells, retells her accident, her whole life story, so that she can uh, uh, recalibrate and reorient her life to the present. Because she's like, oh, okay, I got in an accident. Oh, okay, I got amnesia. Oh, okay, uh, now I can't make new memories. But who is this guy who, 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 lo who loves me, who, who's chasing after me? Oh, he's Henry. And he's had like, you know, many, many first dates with me because of his pursuit uh, to love me, uh, her life better because of the, this video that he makes for her. Of course, every time she sees the accident, she's like, oh, man, like, how devastating, how horrible my life is. But then uh, she sees the love of her life um, that, that pursued her every day. Um, and eventually that video gets longer as it gets edited with more events that happen, including her eventual marriage to this man and the start of her family. But the key is every day she has to watch this video to understand and make sense of her life. Um, it's a really funny movie, um, but what, what stuck out to me is that, uh, that you know, like, like her, we all have to find our place, in a sense. We kind of have to find our place. Like, do you just ask yourself sometimes, like, what am I doing this for? Like, where is my life headed? Um, uh, and, and we all long for a big story to make sense of the events of our lives, right? Are you there with me? Um, or are you living day to day like Lucy, just day to day, not knowing what's going on, not knowing what, uh, you, know, you know, what's happened in the, uh, what significance your life has made uh, in the past few years? Um, not knowing if there's more to your life. Is there anything more to this? Can anything come out of this tragedy, right? Um, uh, we all need a video. We all need a story. And so what's, what's your story? How do you make sense of... Um, uh, the diffi difficult times of life and uh, who you are and where you're headed, what your hope is, where you're going. Um, how do you make sense of tragedy and sin and all these things that happen? And so we ask ourselves, um, we ask ourselves, what's, what's the story to know where I fit in this world, right? To know where I fit in what I'm doing right now at this age, at this stage of my life. And so the passage we read, verses 1 through 9, basically is talking about uh, that, that there's going to be difficult times, Paul's saying to, to his protege, to his uh, young uh, one that he's discipling, to his, uh, uh, this pastor, Timothy. And he's saying, there's going to be difficult times. You're going to face opposition, deception, persecution, suffering. Basically saying, we live in a fallen world. And how are you going to respond to that? How are you going to continue on in living your life with purpose and with hope? Because everywhere around us, there's so many, uh, just like Timothy, there's going to be so many uh, ideas and, 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 and so-called truths and philosophies and things that's going to shape uh, and give you identity and what your purpose in life is all about. And there's, uh, there's um, opposing stories that uh, want to suck you in to say that this is what your life is for. And so how do you make sense of all of this? And that's the battle of our hearts. Like these stories are, are battling for, for your attention, all right? To who's going to be your God? Who are you going to have as the, the place in the center of your life? What does your life revolve around? What are you living for? And we all have to face that question sooner or later. And so Paul is telling Timothy, that's right, this is the reality of the world. There's opposition, there's suffering, there's, there's persecution, there's, there's men out there, there's, there's people out there who are going to feed you false things and false, you know, uh, ideologies and philosophies of life. And so what Paul says to Timothy, though, is continue in the things you have learned and have become convinced of. 
From childhood, you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And so he's saying, continue in this, in this story. Continue in this story through hardships, through deception, through lies, through persecution, through, through figuring out uh, and navigating through life. Continue in the word. And so what we, as we go through uh, the, the, the what and the why and the how of, of God's word, um, I hope that we can all take one step in the direction of knowing and having more of God in his word and finding our place in the big story to shape us. To, to, to give us hope and purpose and direction uh, and to complete us and to, to mold us and to know where we are, where we stand in this world. I hope that the, uh, as we you know, go through this real quick that um, uh, it would give us one step closer to, to wanting to know God's word. As, as Paul uh, said to Timothy, uh, remain, stay steadfast in the word because that's what will get you through. That's what will give you that sense of place and belonging and identity and purpose. Okay, so, so first, what, what is the word? What is the word here? And first, we, we see three things. The authority, the clarity, and the necessity of Scripture. Right? Authority, clarity, and necessity. So what is the word? First, it says, all Scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. It's breathed out by God, inspired by God. These are God's words, it says. And so because it's from God, because they're his words, it comes with his authority. Right? These are his words, his standard of truth. Right? The ultimate rule of faith and practice, what we're to believe, how we're to live, what, we turn, what we're to know about God. These are his words, and this is the truth because it's from God, right? This is what shapes and what defines the big narrative and the big story of our lives and of the Bible. God's words. And scripture was written over a span of 1,500 years by over 40 human authors, right, with distinct personalities and, and writing styles. But for these authors, God providentially directed their lives, their experiences, their, their education, their personalities, their, uh, all these things so that the words that they wrote were exactly the way God wanted it to be. Right? God's word breathed out by God, inspired by God. Right? Um, and so it's trustworthy. It's what we submit our lives to. This is the authority of our lives. And God has revealed himself to us. He's spoken to us. He's, he's made known to us who he is and who you are and what this big world is all about. He's made himself known to you. Um, when, uh, when, when my wife and I, we first met, you know, um, we, we met, I, I, I told you this before, we met through uh, Facebook Messenger because a friend of ours introduced us to us while we were long distance right uh, she was in Korea I was in the States and so uh, but I was interested I was very interested right um, uh, after you know we met through Facebook I you know saw her pictures and things like that and it's like oh yeah right thanks thanks bud for uh, introducing me okay and so uh, and so you know but I had to get to know her, right? All right. So we just started casually sending emails to her, emails to one another. I would ask her a question, and she would, yeah, emails back then. Uh, she would, and she would, but they were like letters, man, like fast letters. And so she would reply back, and then once she wrote, once she wrote back, I was like, yes, she wrote back, right? I would open that email, and I'd be like you know, reading every word and just like, oh, this is who she is. Yes. This is what she likes. This is what she's doing. This is what her family's about. And I just get to know her and just, just, just soak on every word in her email. Right? And, um, 
But then later on, as, as you know, we got to, you know, just talk more about, you know, life and things like that, you know, we took it slow. We took it slow. But, you know, um, I was a very busy seminary student. But anyways, at that time, you know, once we, you know, it was evident that there was interest and things like that, you know, I'll, actually, still not sure yet. If she, if she would, like, do a smiley face or something, I'd be like, oh, smiley face. What does that mean? You know, does she like me? Or, you know, uh, or if I see the timestamp of her email, what? It was like 1 a.m. in the morning. Man, she must like me. You know, and I was like thinking, analyzing all these things. You're like, dear goose. Oh, dear? Oh, is it like, like a formal dear? Or is it like, dear goose? You know, and I was just like, you know, analyzing this stuff. You know, that's probably like, oh, man, what a loser. But, um... (laughs) But eventually, um, uh, you know, these emails became, you know, love letters and, and encouragements and friendship and all those things. And the point is, is like, she was revealing herself to me. And I got to know her. I got to, uh, to, to, to really, uh, uh, you know, I studied them. Like, oh, you know, because I really wanted to, to know who she was and who she is. And so, you know, in that same way, we have the word of God in the palm of our hands right? Probably several copies around the house, but, or just a click of an app, but this is God's word, God's revelation of who he is to us, right? This is who I am, he's saying. And, and I admit that sometimes, you know, um, that, that hunger to know God's word, I, I lose that hunger, but, but we, need, we need to be reminded, right, that God spoke. God made himself known to us, Right? And do you want to know this God? Are you eager to read his word and to study them and to meditate on them? We have the Bible, God's word to us, right? His authority, his truth that we can find comfort in and submit our lives to. His word that tells us who we are and that, and that he loves us and that he's rescued us and that you mean something to him, that you are valuable to him. And this is who he is, and he reveals himself to us. Let's want to know this God more. And the uh, the second thing about scripture is that it's clear. The clarity of scripture is this, is that, uh, uh, that we can understand it. We can actually understand it. It's written in a way that he's able to communicate to us, to know what the text means, to understand who God is. Right? We don't need like interpretation. We don't need somebody to, to, to actually you know, filter through and tell us what this means. We can go directly ourselves. We can go to it. Of course, yes, teachers and commentaries, preachers, pe- sermons, all those things help. But you yourself, the scriptures are clear enough for you to be able to understand and know God through the scriptures. That is the clarity of scripture. Because Paul says to Timothy, you have... Uh, from your childhood, you have known the sacred writings. He's able to understand it even as a child. That has got, that, that's how awesome God has made his word to us. That is so clear and uh, communicable. He, he, he made himself known to us even through the clarity of scripture. Not just through his authority and his truth, but through the clarity. And, uh, uh, and lastly, um, uh, just some, some verses about that. Uh, in verse, Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. That's from Proverbs. Psalm 119, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Do not... Your word I've treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Right? You, you can, uh, it's clear as to um, uh, understanding his word and what his word can do and accomplish. Right? We can treasure them. We can know them. So that we're not wandering from his commandments. God has made it clear for us to know him. And then lastly, the necessity of scripture. The necessity of scripture. And and what is the scriptures? We need the scriptures. 
right? We need it to know. There's no other way to know who God is. I mean, yes, we can know some of his attributes, but to know his plan of salvation, right? To know his will, right? To know how to live, what's right and what's wrong, and, and, and how, he, how he shapes us and gives us worth and value and purpose. We need the scriptures, right? General revelation is not adequate, Personal experience and human reason cannot show us the gospel. God graciously showed to us his plan of salvation so that you and I can fit in the big story of God and be with God, be united to God, reconciled to God, become his sons and daughters, and to live out his purposes for us in this world. We need the scriptures, and he's given it to us. Because outside of the scriptures, we cannot know this big story. And that's what the scriptures are about. It's the big story that we all need to make sense of who we are and who he is and where we're going and why we're here. In Deuteronomy 8.3, as Jesus quotes it, he says, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is our life. We need God's word. And he's graciously given it to us. And he tells us his plan of redemption. He tells us and he, and he shows us fully who he is, right? Through this, this story of redemption, right? And real briefly, what is the story that God, who's this, this happy, self-sufficient, Trinitarian God, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is, is, in, is, is one and they love one another. They serve one another. They exalt one another, right? It's this perfect uh, fellowship, right? And, and he wanted to include us into that, having that relationship with him, right? This God who is sovereign, who's in complete control, who's wise and all-knowing, who makes no mistakes, but sovereignly ordains everything to be because he knows, right? He's not only is he, is he, is he in control, but he makes no mistakes, And he's a good God. He's not evil. And he can be trusted. And he invites us to know him. Right? Every one of us believes in in, in act one of who is God. We all have something that we want to center in our lives. What have you placed in the center of your life? Is it this creator, all-knowing, all-wise, all-good God? Who do you worship? Who do you give live your life to as your final authority. But God says, this is who I am. And he makes himself known to us. And then the next part of the story is the creation, right? Creation. We all ask, who am I and who should I be? And everyone is informing their sense of identity and purpose in life. What gives you value and worth and meaning and significance? And you have two stories to choose from. In the beginning, God or there is no God. And what's that going to be? To say there is no God, if you say there is no God, how can you live your life as it means something then? As it makes a difference if there's no God. Because if there's no God, you believe in a world that was created by random chance. Right? Then, then why, does your, why do you live as if your life has meaning if it's all by chance? It makes no sense. Or, or how can we live uh, believing that, that rape and slavery and oppression and violence and abuse and exploitation are wrong? How can we believe that it's wrong if we live in a world with no God based on survival of the fittest, natural selection? How can all that be wrong then? God has placed that into us because in the beginning, God. God always was and always existed and always will. And he created us in his image as his representatives, right? There's something of him in us so that we can reflect that to one another in this world. It's an identity. It's a calling. He gives that to us. And he says, you're valuable. You're valuable. You mean something. You represent me. And your identity comes from him. And we all know that as the story unfolds, there's rebellion Right? And, and, that, and we ask ourselves, what's wrong with this world? How do I make sense of the brokenness in and around me? 
And it's the problem of sin and evil, right? This Satan coming into the world and, and tempting and, and causing uh, Adam and Eve to sin and rebel and turn away and run away from God. And we all have this rebellion in our hearts. We want to be our own God. We want to turn away from God. And we think other things would give us this identity and this meaning and this significance and worth. But God says in his word, because he's holy, because he's created God, that this sin, this rebellion deserves death and eternal separation from him. But God promises there will be someone who will uh, rescue us. There will be a serpent crusher. He says in Genesis, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring, Satan's and hers. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. From the line of the woman will come a descendant who will crush the serpent. He will defeat and abolish this devil and evil along with it. And he promises a rescuer, a serpent crusher. And the rest of the scriptures from Genesis is about the search for the serpent crusher. When will he come? And meanwhile, Satan is at work trying to tempt and turn everyone away and rebel against God. And he leads people into idolatry and sin. We're under his trap. We're under his deception. And that's the story that unfolds throughout the scripture. Rebelling against God. Finding worth and identity in idols and other things. Being trapped under the deception and the lives that, lies that this will satisfy. This, will, this is what you're living for. Until one day, finally, God sends the rescuer. By his grace, he, he, he doesn't want the world to continue in this way. And so by his grace, he sends his son Jesus, right, to take the punishment that we deserved. To take the full wrath of sin that we deserved. This rebellion against this, this creator, authoritative God. Not only does he take our sin, he, takes, he, he credits to us his righteousness, his perfect record. So that you can be approved and accepted by him. And so Jesus rescues us, rescues us, and he gives us new life. As he rises from the grave, we too are given a new heart and a new life by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that we can know God. And that we can now be reconciled to him. And have this creator God. And not be eternally separated from him. But to have a God who loves us and cares for us. Now we have that God as our father. Because of Jesus. And finally there's a home. There's a home that we have. What do I hope for? Where am I going? How will all of this end? Only Christianity tells of the eternal life in a world. That there's no more pain or death. And everything sad comes untrue. And even the worst things that happen to us in this life are redeemed and made for greater future bliss. God revealed his grace and his plan of rescue to reveal his great mercy and his sovereignty and to reveal his great grace, his unending grace and love. He's revealed that to us in this story of scripture, just as Paul told Timothy, right? It makes us wise for salvation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. It's all right here. And we can know this God more and be more of all of who he is because it's right here. Have you read this story for yourself? And so why? Right, that's the what. So why? Why do we read this? Because Paul... Paul continues on saying all scripture is profitable and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work so why do we read this why do we study this why know him because God wants to complete us equip us in this life right to to teach us what is truth and what is error? What is sin and what is righteous? God wrote this, revealed this to us to correct us, to set us straight, to keep on the right path, 
to be trained and disciplined in his ways, in the, in the fullest life that he wants us to have. He's given us his word in equipping us for that. To be healed and to be made whole, to be uh, adequate and, 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 and sufficient in living this life for him. It's all in his word so that we can be fully all that he desires for us to be. All that he wants us to have it has been given to us. That is the sufficiency of Scripture. Scripture contains all the words of God we need for salvation and for trusting Him and for being all that He made us to be and to live this life for Him and obey Him perfectly. God has given it all to us here in this Bible. And so as we read it, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who's not, who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. And Jesus says in Matthew 7, everyone who hears my words and acts on them was like a man, wise man who built his house on the rock, the rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and slammed against that house, yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. His word. And as we wrap up here, just a few hows, a few hows of why we read it. I'll say first, pray. Pray, God, I want to know you. Show me more of yourself, right? And then this is going to blow your mind, but read it actually read the word read it for yourself because there's no substitute there's no shortcuts there's no quick fix at the end of the day there's no replacement for finding a regular time and place blocking out distractions and just putting your nose in the text and letting your mind and heart be captured by God himself as he communicates to us there's no substitute but, but, but know this, it's, it's, it's not learned overnight. I know it's daunting to say, oh, I have to read all of this, but, but, day, but it's, a, it's a marathon, right? Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, as you read it, you get to understand it more better. Just like any other book that you read, as you read it, you read the story and you know the characters, you know the plot, you know why the author wrote it. In that same way, this is his word to us, right? So we must read it. Right? Get a hard copy, get a bookmark, get a Bible plan, and highlight, and pen, and, and, and mark off. And, and even if it's just a few minutes a day, you can read the Word of God in its entirety. Just 12 minutes a day, you can read the Word of God in a year. Right? Or if that's too much, do half, six minutes, and take two years. But, but go slow and steady at your pace, but, and read it. Reading it is like seeing a map. It's like seeing the bigger picture, right? It's like seeing a, a treasure map. And you walk through, the, and you can walk through the land and, and kind of briskly go over it, but you kind of get a grasp of the land, right? But sometimes you stop and you dig, right? And it takes a little bit of work, and you study it, you meditate on it, but you will find diamonds as you dig and as you stop. So Bible reading and studying is like that. You read it for, for the breath, right? For the overview, right? But you stop for the diamonds. The, the treasures and the nuggets that you get from his word. Bible reading is like watching a, a sports game, right? In real time. You, you see the game, the overview. You see who wins. But as you study it, you pause and you look at the plays, you look at the, mo the different movements uh, of the plays and you study it frame by frame, looking at each motion. Or you meditate on it, you watch highlights, like, oh, that was awesome, that was glorious. And you watch the highlight again, oh, that was beautiful. That's like meditation. Studying is like frame by frame, pausing and, and studying the, every movement. But these are the tools for reading God's word and getting into knowing God, right? Meditation is, 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 is taking time to, to stop and, 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 and enjoy just the, the riches that that scripture reveals about who God is and his promises or his character and his actions. 
and you let it soak in. You chew on it. You, you taste the, the juices. You enjoy the flavor. It's not a quick bite, but a slow savoring, right? And you fill your mind with this truth until it does something to your heart. And you ask, what is this saying about God? What does it say about his character? What does it say about his actions and his promises? When do I need to remember this? When should I, wh what situation will this give me encouragement? And you write it down and you meditate on it. What does it say about me and my sin? How is it rebuking me and correcting me and, and training me and causing me to repent and change and live for him and please him? And as you study, you even go deeper Right? You go deeper as to who wrote this and, and to who and why. And what was the main point? It may all sound daunting, but my encouragement to you is, is, is space it out. Go at your pace, but know this. Know that as we wrap up here, uh, I'll bring, uh, ask the praise team to come up. Know that this story, this big story is what shapes us and defines us and gives us our place in this world. Just as, going back to that movie, just as Lucy was, was comforted each day knowing that this guy is the guy who loves me and cares for me. And now she's able to, to all her fears are wiped away. She's able to just live her life knowing her story, knowing her place. Guys, play the video of God's story in your life every day. Play the video that he came to reveal himself, to rescue us, and to make us his own. Play that story every day as you meditate on this truth. And it'll help you, and, and all your, your fears, your worries, will be washed away in, in the comfort of his sovereignty, and of his love, and of his care for you. God revealed himself in this world, in this word, in his word, but ultimately in his son, the word who was with God in the beginning, who was God, became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory. John 1, verse 14. In Jesus, right? The word incarnate, the word became flesh in Jesus. As you meditate on Jesus and read about Jesus and, and put the good news of Jesus in your heart. The good news that he preached, the good news of his life and death. We have the big story that tells us that he rescued you and he came for you. Let this shape and permeate your reality. Let it guide you. Let it define you. And let it give you the joy and the freedom and the approval and the acceptance that we all need as you chew on Jesus, the word, the truth that God has given to us so that we can know him. Let's pray. It's God, we thank you for uh, revealing yourself to us. Given us, giving us your word. Thank you so much that we can know you and that we can experience transformation and the power of your word as we apply it, as we meditate on it, as we study it, as we read it, as we pray through it. We can see the power and the authority of your word doing its work doing what it was intended to do and not returning empty. Thank you so much that you have given that to us. Lord, would you cause us to uh, be more hungry for your truth and for the light that it gives so that we can know our place in this world and be protected from the other things of this world that try to define us and tell us who we are. But God, may we stay in your word continue in your word this story or we ask that it changes us and transforms us as we go deeper as we spend more time lord give us your grace to help us to draw near to you and know you in jesus name we pray